Hey, I'm Nick Long Neighbor. Welcome back to FM22 Youth Factory. This is episode 45. Last time out, we fixed the morale and our season really started to turn around after a very poor start. And we've seen that trend continue. Another four games into the future. We have three wins and one loss during that stretch. It was a road loss. It was a game that you'd say is disappointing, but let's go ahead and look through these game by game. So first off, uh, sh- Spiel, Spielkovic, Spielkovic, 2 nothing home win. Uh, really wasn't as comfortable as you would think based on the scoreline because we had a stoppage time goal to seal it. Looking at the ratings, it was fairly mixed. Uh, it really wasn't you know the, the best team performance, but they got the job done, and that's the important part. Then they traveled on the road to the 13th place team in the league, and had a very disappointing two nothing loss and and you know based on the ratings we didn't play all that bad but you lose two nothing you lose two nothing period so it looks like xg wise it seems like we probably could have gotten something more out of that game you know without having to actually go into it but based on the ratings alone they they did what they needed to do and we did not and we come out the losers but we we answer with a good result Strum's Godset is one of the really good clubs. They they won the league a couple of years ago. They were in the higher division and then relegated, so they yo-yoed. They're not quite as good this year, though. And they're still competitive. They're still tough. They're still mid-table. They were certainly above us for most of the season. And they've got a second-minute penalty in this thing to take the lead. And, and based on the ratings, it looked like they were in control probably the entire first half maybe the second half we started to fight back but uh it took a 74th minute penalty to equalize and that just opened the floodgates because we scored again just a minute later with halkeberg presumably on a corner kick and that that really changed the landscape in two minutes we went from down and scoring no points to taking all three and then finally, we were able to go on the road and come away with a result, something we haven't done too much of this season. We've had a few road wins, one nothing, and again, maybe a little fortunate because of a 77th minute penalty. Looking at the ratings, we kind of struggled our way through this one. The defense did okay, which means Asker put a good amount of pressure on us. And considering who the opponent was, that actually makes a lot of sense. And this is a fortunate three points because it very well could have been a point or a loss uh, under the circumstances. Now with three wins, nine points from four matches played, we have strengthened our position in the league. We've gone now from mid-table into the upper end. It's still tight. It's still very much a contest, but you can see we've we've pulled a little bit of a gap on that mid-table. I mean, that mid-table really all the way down to ham cam is still really tight just six points from fifth to 11th but we're now three points ahead of that whole group we're still five back of arendale we're still seven back of odds two so it's it's not easy it's not going to be easy to overtake one or both of these but we are still again for the second year in a row looking at a santa fjord not total domination situation, but definitely ahead. Definitely somewhat comfortable in the league and the favorites. The one thing, though, is they have six matches left. Everybody else has more, at least around this part of the table. But with seven to play, moving up won't be easy. And we'll have to overtake, we'll have to keep everybody else at bay. And we have to overtake one of them to get into that promotion playoff position, which we had a year ago. Now, of course, if you exclude our terrible terrible start to the season we'd very much be in that mix right what was it we we calculated last time something like eight or nine points dropped we should be eight or nine points better off if we didn't have the morale situation we had at the beginning of the year that would put us right where we need to be right 39 or 40 points right now would see us in second place and very much looking at either automatic promotion or being a contender. So if this isn't our year, it it certainly feels like next year could and should be. This year, 
don't write it off yet because there's still a chance. But it's a pretty slim chance. Seven matches to go, though. Top teams have a habit of falling apart late. You know, we sort of fell apart late last season. So we succumbed to the pressure where the season before it was the other teams that allowed us to close that gap. Could this be that kind of year where they succumb to the pressure and we close that gap and maybe see ourselves in to a position of contention? It's possible. Let's go ahead and push forward, let's say, three games. That'll leave us with four to go on the season, and we'll see where we're at at that point. Our next match was a bit of a thriller. We led 2 nothing. They battled back with a brace to equalize. And then in stoppage time, Gillo, clearly off of some sort of uh, free kick, gets the game winner in the 90-plus. It's a 3-2, huge win, especially with you know form that didn't look so great. And then, massive, we go on the road from one nothing down inside the first 10 minutes. We equalize before half, but then Mankiewicz with a late off-the-bench game winner, so a very inspired sub on that one, and we beat the league leaders, Santa Fjord. And we actually did enough to knock them off the top step of the league in that. But then we go again on the road uh, a week later, and we lose one nothing. In performance that looks like we probably deserved a little something based on the ratings where no one played bad, but no one played particularly good. So it could have been a draw, but not to be. In fact, it's been quite a while since we've had a draw. It's been almost almost three months since we've had a draw in the league. So two out of three, yeah, six points from, from three played is obviously not bad and it's still a better rate than what we have on the year but our position is essentially the same well literally it is we're still in fourth we're still three points clear of the chasers we're only on a plus four goal differential so the goal differential is never going to help us out sandefjord is not in the mix so it's still odds in arendale odds at 45 points now lead everybody around us in the top five have just four left to play and arendale well, they're currently six points ahead now. So at six ahead with just four to play, I don't like our odds of, of making something happen. It looks fairly unlikely at this state, which means, as kind of predicted, it, it seemed obvious that we would sort things out with the morale. We would escape that relegation zone that we were facing earlier in the season. We never did get a penalty, unless that's coming next year because the administration thing sorted out just after the year started. Could happen. They could wait till next year to make that decision, in which case we would be punished two years in a row, first by the internal punishment and then the external punishment for year number two. I hope that's not the case because I'm certainly ready to challenge for promotion Uh, this year. You know, you add those eight points in, and we're absolutely right there. We'd be equal on points and looking at a real shot at at promotion. Without it, looks like we're just short. You know, we've climbed from the bottom to nearly the top over the course of this season, and I like what that points to for next year. And, of course, without losing players, and we haven't had any sort of money bids in the last what, year and a half now. So I don't think that we're going to be running too much danger, too much risk of of losing players come this summer. The administration thing has been dealt with. The finances aren't great at the moment, but it is so much better. I mean, we reset to that small amount, but, you know, looking at where we're at, it's now been five months, five months, and we're only 40,000 in debt almost half a year and we went from 20k to 40k in debt meaning we've only lost another 20,000 that's fantastic i mean that's really fantastic we are not losing at a rapid rate we are now closer to hovering around zero and i'm certain that if we are promoted obviously it's not looking likely for this season but if we are promoted even if we have to wait another year for that to happen that negative balance won't be negative any longer, right? The extra boost by playing in the second tier to the fan base 
I think would be enough to keep a positive balance, not by a wide margin or anything, but at least keep a, a positive balance and therefore making the finances no longer a great, great concern. And of course, as you continue to develop that reputation, the that fan base is only going to get larger and larger and larger. With four to play, every game is a must win from here on out. And that's a lot of pressure, and I don't think we're quite up for that. I think there's a great chance that we could probably get three wins out of four, but I really don't like our chances of winning all four, especially with the added pressure of trying to come from behind and, and overtake one of those couple teams above us that, that count. Santa Fjord, of course, the other team, but doesn't matter whether we finish ahead or behind them. Between Odds 2 and, and Arendelle, I don't like our chances of overtaking. There's one thing, though, that does give us some hope, at least, as we, oh, we nearly score on this one. Keeper had to push that one away from the upper corner. Of course, near post would have been an easy score, but we went back across goal, even though the keeper was not in the right position. Anyway, the one, the one thing that kind of plays into our favor and gives us a chance, because we are down by six points with four to play, is that we do have one of those four remaining matches directly head-to-head -head with Arendelle. So if we win that match, you're closing that gap by three points. Assuming we can win that one, then out of the other three matches, we only need to gain three points on Arendelle. Easier said than done, because goal differential still won't favor us, and I don't think the head-to-head -head will matter. The the goal differential comes first. Now, we've had the only chances in this one so far, and we've had multiple highlights already. And considering we haven't even played 12 minutes yet, I'm liking our chances of making something happen here as we go close twice, but the blocks keep us out. I, I really like our chances at the moment of getting something from this game here in the early minutes. Uh, one notable thing, Moen, now the starter this year, is developing. It's slow. It is not rapid progress by any means, but I think he's a plus two current ability over the course of the season as Burgum gets the opener, his 12th of the season overall, and I believe that is his 10th in the league. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense, actually, because we only played a single match and lost, and I think it was like three to one, so not quite accurate. He's got to have at least 10, if not 11 in the league. But Anyway, we do lead 1-0 on this one, but that nice switch of play leads to a chance. Moen makes a good stop on that one. Uh, we do have some fatigue in the legs of a number of players as we enter these last four matches. Uh, it's been a regular thing. Again, physically, this team was well behind the league. The one area that they have developed relatively well over the last three seasons as another decent stop from Moen, though that looks like it could have been heading above the bar, but if it was a chip, it would have dropped back down. That one place where we've progressed fairly well, where we've seen a lot of rapid development over these last three seasons at this level, has been the physicals, where we're catching up on that. Nice tackle from Osby. Andreasen through for Lovas, and he makes it too. What a goal. That was a great, great goal. And we've only just now entered the 18th minute this goal might have taken place just inside the 17th minute looks like it does a few seconds inside of it Lavas, nice one little curl to that too a low ball it's hard to curl a low ball like that it's the moment it starts hitting the turf it just skips off the turf Bergam over the top for Lovas. can we make it three early on in this one we definitely look to be heading our way towards three points at least from if early play is any indication, mold here is mid table. Mid table. Earlier in the year, this would have been a difficult match. But now, now with the morale improved, you can see just how easy it is for us to take control. One downside to these last four matches, and another reason why I don't want to get too hopeful or raise expectations too much is on Treason. Trickles that in under the keeper to make it three inside half an hour played. 
you know what, we're going to be pushing forward to uh, our next league match here really, really soon, or at least our next update on where we're at, uh, as I'm not going to play out all four of these live. Uh, like I said, I just I don't think this is the season based on how the season started. It would have been the season if it wasn't for the administration problem we had. But because of that, because of what it did to morale, because of what it did to the start of the season, I think next season is the one where we are destined for promotion to the second tier finally. But anyway, all things equal, <laughs> as it's for just a few minutes later. Oh my goodness, we are all over them. Uh, three of these four matches are on the road. And we have to play mostly, you know, higher end sides in the table. It's just, it, it's not an easy schedule. And it's a lot of added pressure. It's just, I don't like our odds. I do not like our odds. Uh, but we're making the best of it at the moment. Looks like we are on our way to three points anyway. And this time, Post has bailed us out a little bit. I don't know if Moen got just a little, little piece of that to help push it onto the bar. But that was close to a fifth. All right. Let's go ahead and push forward. I'll show you how our next match. We'll take one match at a time at the moment. And we'll see what the results were for that. Our road match at Sarpsborg ended up in a disappointing draw that is actually kind of fortunate because it was a 95th minute penalty to equalize after we had given up the early lead that we had established. Now with just two to play, we have Braun at home who sit 10th this season. They're quite a bit lower than we're used to seeing them. Oh, and by the way, Minkowitz was in the starting role because during that last match, after cutting away during the second half, we finished 6-2, but Burgum ended up out injured. So he had a hat trick, he had a perfect 10 rating, but he did not complete the game. He played one hour only, and he's out for three to four weeks from that. Now, from middle of the month to where we're now at, we might get him back in time for the last couple of matches, but is it too late? because we needed pretty much a perfect record here down the stretch. So two to play, okay, check on that part. Six point gap, no, we're 10 back from odds two. We're definitely not going to compete there. Sandefjord have slipped. They're the team stumbling, but even then we're too far back, both Arendelle and Sandefjord. This season, it is not to be. We have two matches to go at this point, the only uh, ones we need to look at are behind us in Ranheim and Strom's gun set. So let's just go ahead and finish out the last two bit matches of the season this year. Not to be, but again, if you added eight to that, we'd be on 49. We'd be right there in the mix. And potentially beating Arendelle in that final match would have been enough to put us ahead of them. Technically, we were just supposed to avoid relegation. And from where we started to where we are, it's good. You and I both know this This is a team that's now on the verge that could be a, a proper uh, contender for promotion. But it's going to have to wait till next season. I'm feeling a little bit better about the pressure being off because if the pressure was on, this would have been ugly and this would have hurt. We lost 5-1 to Braun. Braun, who sits 10th in the league. Shots were 23-15. XG was two and a half to one and a half. Possession 57% in our favor. The only home match of the final four games down the season. Ostby with a straight red in the 87th. So really not an impactful one at that point. It was already 4-1 when that happened. But yeah, ugly. We were down 4 nothing just a few minutes into the second half. And, you know, based on the stats, that shouldn't have been. Good thing we didn't need this one. Good thing it really doesn't matter. We're, we're going we're gonna to look forward and push on to next season. One more match to play. And then we'll call this thing an episode and call the season a wrap. Managing to acquire just one point in the final three matches... I mean, it's we were the team for the second successive year that really succumbed to the pressure late on. There, There's always somebody, always. Uh, 
and Sandefjord ended up also, like us, collapsing very late in the season, and they went from league leaders to third. So proper championship for odds two and proper promotion playoff position for Arendale as they get to 54 and 53 points, respectively. Sandefjord on 52 is a very, very tight top three. We, with just a plus two goal differential and 41 points, of course, if we would have had that plus eight or plus nine, it still wouldn't have been enough. We would have been just behind all of that, which means we're still kind of right there, but not quite, not quite. And that performance at the very, very end of the season really does show just how we are that little bit off. But look how tight it was. Braun, who ended up up in seventh after beating us and nearly around 500, they were just four points clear of the drop. That's how tight that was. Sarpsburg, only three points further back. Uh, Spielkovic was really the only team that struggled. And somehow Spielkovic, they got one of their only wins of the season against us. All three wins coming at home, though, for them. That that just kind of shows how vulnerable we were. That was one of our losses at the beginning of the year where we uh, were still struggling, still coming out of that low morale. For comparison, Rosenborg and Stebeck were the two teams at, at the top of the other division. And you could see a little bit of a difference. Ike Tonsberg, who were one of the promoted sides, ended up in third and Vard. Otherwise, they had a bit of a drop off. There was definitely not as much quality and there hasn't been season by season on the other side. Not to say that there wasn't. I mean, there's four pretty solid teams there. But there's a definite drop off compared to our division uh, comparatively at the, you know, the top end of it. So, we've been a little bit unlucky that we've been in the better division all these years. But only a little, because we still had a chance, and we lost that promotion playoff. We've we've been there. So just take that with a grain of salt. It's just a little something, but only a little. I'd say all in all, it's fairly evenly balanced. Close enough, anyway. That is going to do it for this episode and this season. I plan to make my way quickly through the off season. I don't expect any major things to happen this year. The one thing that I'm nervous about to find out about is if for some reason uh, the results of our administration thing that happened right after what the first or second match of the season, if they just were waiting until the next start to a season to apply a penalty. Barring that, I think our chances are pretty good next year because the team, team's getting better and better. Look at Halkeberg now, a 90 Four. Osby and Bergham still sitting on their 85 and 80, but Modest is coming along. Uh, he's definitely going to want to get into the mix, but he, like Andreasen, how much better are they going to get? Not so much. But Arsend slowly making his climb. Jonas Gay, who just started this season, has done really well. He was in the 60s and now mid-70s. Uh, Fawoli finally has a plus one again. He was at a 71 for a long time, but dropped to a 70. He's back to that 71. And Gillow slowly climbing. And we've got plenty of backups that are now into the 60s. A couple of U19s that, are, that have climbed up there as well, meaning those in the 50s, uh, or certainly the 40s, are now no longer really going to be in contention. Somebody like Hegestad, we're probably going to be letting go as he just doesn't even have the potential to be good enough to be a backup. We might as well find a replacement. The only problem is we are a bit thin at that right mid position, but only a bit. We do have Christopher Al at, at least, but you know, how do those two compare? Well, similarly. And if Christopher Al ever does take off and develop which hasn't happened at this point i if we ever get his mentoring to to make him from an unambitious player to somebody who's at least balanced 
maybe we could see him take off and he'd certainly be more useful than Hegestad ever will be. Samo Christensen, these are the kind of guys, uh, Olison, Burke Fossum, probably going to be parting ways with th- at least those four uh, entering next year, maybe even Pena for that matter, uh, though he's at least closer to being in the mix. You know, after all this time and his time as a starter, he's still only had 39 appearances. All right, well, that does it for this one. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Ukraine, my heart is with you. Bye for now.